welcome to the class and we are going to discuss something very interesting. We touched upon it in the beginning. Okay, this is control resource design. We are going to look at it in great detail. Okay, and then it will help us in understanding how actually a user functions when it enters the network or when it has to decode uh, its data. It has to basically find out where its DCI is. Okay, then it depends on where its core set lies. Okay. So that's what we are going to see. Okay, so this is the control resource set design, and this is these are the references. Okay, now what happens here is okay. Let's see. So to put things in perspective, okay, DCI has been encoded, right? We saw this. So what happens? We did not cover this scrambler and four qua modulation. They are basically essentially the same as what are there for PDSCH chain. Okay, we understand what qua modulation, four qua modulation is. We of course know what scrambler is. Okay, I'm not going to go into the details. No point in doing that. Okay, so rate matched bits are basically scrambled, and then they are four qua modulated. Okay, right. And so what you have at the end of it is just the sufficient number of symbols which you are, which you are allowed to transmit for a particular user. Correct. Okay. Right, and these symbols need to be mapped on this two-dimensional two grid. Correct. Somewhere data will be mapped, and somewhere these uh, like PDCCH will be mapped. And PDCCH is mapped on what? It is mapped on core set, control resource set. Okay. So where where do these control resource set come? We saw some pictures in the beginning. We are going to like revisit those pictures. Okay, and then we will understand how these core sets are designed. Okay, right. So we saw somewhere they'll come. Let's say most of the time they'll come in this, in the beginning of the slot, right? They might come in the middle of the slot also. We saw that. Okay, but they are going to be mapped onto this two-dimensional grid, correct? Okay, and we understand that also. Like this PDCCH can come along with data, or it can come in advance. Okay, but what we are saying here is this two-dimensional grid is now full, some with PDCCH and some with PDSCH. Then you take one symbol, pass it through IFFT, do all this operation, up convert it, correct, okay, right? And the receiver down convert it, I have not shown the RF part. Then you ADC, the CP removal, time domain, FFT, you read this, okay, one symbol, you put this together, this one example, okay, you have this frame, user has this frame now, okay, it is interested to decode its data. Right? It doesn't know where its data is. It doesn't know where PDCCH is coming. Okay? There is no explicit indication. It's sitting PDCCH is sitting somewhere on these core sets which are coming here. Here we don't know. Right? Okay? Correct. And as I said earlier, that user has to make these attempts blindly. Okay? We'll revisit that. Okay? But that get that picture clear. Okay? That this is how user has received. Is ready to receive its data. Doesn't know where its data is. It doesn't even know where its PDCCH is. Okay? How does decoding happen? That's what we are going to learn in this. Okay? Right? And you'll see it's very interesting. Okay? So what is this? Just to like from this. Okay? So this definition of core set is basically common for both base station and user, of course. Okay? So what is this core set? Time frequency resource where control information may be transmitted for a user. Okay, right. It is not necessarily, even though it is waiting to receive data, that it will get served in this particular slot, right? Because the turn has not come, and why it is, its turn has not come? Because scheduler has decided that it is not the appropriate time for this user to receive its data. Correct. Okay. So that's how these courses are transmitted. Again, the one slot, right? I showed you that picture. User has received this slot. Okay. Right. So somewhere these courses are sitting. Okay. We'll see how these courses are defined in the standard. Okay, and what is the philosophy behind its design? Okay, right. So these core sets can occur at any position within a slot and anywhere in the bandwidth. There's only one PRB. There are 275 PRB like this, right? And anywhere in this 14 symbols. Okay, right. For common traffic scenarios, when a scheduling decision is taken once per slot, okay, right, core set is located at the beginning of the slot. Correct. Otherwise, if it is URLC data, then it can come anywhere in the slot. Right? Okay. So, core set can be transmitted at other time instances also. URLC transmission occupying only a few of DM symbols 
Okay. When can it come at other instances? Wherein UILC transmission is happening. Okay. UILC transmission occupying only a few FDM symbols without waiting for the start of the next law. That's where it comes. Of course, it comes anywhere in the slot also. So if it is URLC, it will keep waiting throughout the slot also. Okay. So what is this? Just to uh, finish this discussion, user has to monitor these core sets okay, and blindly decode its DCI. Okay. Why is blind about it? Because user does not explicitly know where its core sets are coming or where its DCI is coming. Doesn't know that. Okay, it has to scan. Let's say scan across 275 PRBs. Scan, scan across 14 symbols. Okay, that's what is blind. Okay. So core sets are designed such that user will require a maximum of X blind decoding attempts to find out whether its DCI is transmitted or not. What are we saying here? So there is certain restriction which is imposed on these core set designs such that this blind decoding attempts are limited to 36 if it is FR1, it's 20 if it is FR2. Okay. Now what we are going to see here is from now is what are these restrictions? So that user can blindly decode these, its DCI in maximum of these attempts. Right? Okay. Correct. So what we have understood till now, the transmitter chain, okay, and we know that data has to be mapped onto these core sets, okay, correct. And what are we, what am I going to tell you? How these core sets are designed, okay, at the transmitter. Of course, the same definition is applicable at the receiver also, right? And what are those design restrictions? These are the restrictions which will help a user to decode its DCI in maximum of these attempts, okay, and. What is this attempt? It will become, as we go along, it will become clear how this core set will help us in doing that. Okay, how this core set design will enable this. Okay, let's, so that's where this we are going to study this core sets. Okay, so the, in the big picture is clear. Okay, right. So we are at the transmitter, we are ready to map the data. Core sets need to be defined, and they need to be defined according to the standard. Okay, and what are those definitions, and what are those restrictions? We are going to understand. Okay. Right? So, what am I showing you here is basically, look at this core set structure and basic definitions. Okay? Right? What is this basic unit here? Okay? Don't look at this, I'll explain everything. Okay? Right? So, let's look at these bullets first. And what are these bullets? What am I saying here? So, what is first definition here is, what we call here is resource element group. Okay? This is essentially one PRB in one OFDM symbol. Nice name, okay, we are calling it REG, but it is essentially PRB to connect, okay. But in PDCCH domain, it is called REG, resource element group, okay. So fine, you see this, okay. First thing, okay, first level, what is this? REs, okay, one PRB has 12 REs. That's 12 REs clubbed together as PRB. And what am I saying here? REG is basically one PRB, so that's what it is. Okay, right. What is the next step? That's what I'm going to define in the next bullet. Fine. Okay. So, what is this next hierarchy? Okay. This is control channel element. Okay. What is it defined? What are we defining from REGs? We are moving on to CCEs. Control channel elements. Okay, what are the control channel elements? This is basically six REG. Look at this. What am I? I'm clubbing six REGs. I'm calling that as CCE. One CCE is basically equal to twelve REGs. So, sorry, six REGs. Okay, that's okay. One CCE is equal to six REGs. Okay, and then how many REGs it will contain? Seventy-two. Right. So what, I, what are we saying here? How the CC is designed? Okay, CC is designed such that at least one UE-specific DCI can be transmitted within. Okay, it'll become clear what is this. Okay, when I show you the numbers. Okay, hang on. This is the, what are we saying here? CC is defined such that at least one PDCCH can be transmitted for a user. Okay, at least one UE-specific DCI can be transmitted with for a user, okay, right? And then CCEs are aggregated to form NRPDCCH, okay? What are we saying here? We are 
if you look at this case, we are further aggregating CCEs to form PDCCH, to the, form the complete PDCCH. How many, what is the aggregation here? I am calling this as aggregation level 2. So how many CCEs are we aggregating? 2 CCEs. So it's called aggregation level 2. On these aggregated CCEs, finally, the PDCCH will be mapped or your DCI will be mapped, okay, right? So in this case, how many resources you'll be transmitting? Let's calculate that, okay? That's also we'll see. So what is this? How, what are we saying here? We are aggregating two CCs, okay? And how many different levels of aggregations are allowed? One, two, four, eight, and 16. What are we saying here? For a particular user, either you can transmit one CC, that is aggregation level one, you can aggregate two of them, then you can transmit. These are resources basically. This is not that, see what are we saying here? We are just defining resources for a user, okay? This is the aggregation level of the resources. Look, be clear about the hierarchy. What are we defining here? These are the total resources which are available for transmitting a particular user's DCI, right? Okay, and how are we doing it? This is the basic granularity. PRB, one REG is equal to one PRB, one CC is equal to six REGs, correct? This is basic granularity, okay? For each user, you will have to transmit at least one CC, okay, right? All that G and E will become clear in some time, okay? So this is one CC. What are we saying here? This user has been given aggregation level two. so it, two CCEs will be used for this user, okay? What are the different aggregation levels? Aggregation level of one, what does that mean? If aggregation level of one, only one CC will be used. Aggregation level of two, two CC will be used for transmitting the DCI, okay? Right? So similarly, four, eight, and 16 are also defined, okay? This example shows aggregation level of two from here. This is aggregation level of two, okay? Right? And what are we showing here? This, what is this bullet saying? Different code rates for PDCCH are realizing by using different aggregation level. Okay, let's see this, what is this bullet saying? Okay, I'll show you example, but then it will become clear. Okay, so I'll, this, I'll show you, okay, what are the different code rates possible if you aggregate at different level. Okay, I'll show you in the next bullet, but I have to tell you something. Okay, so this is what I'm telling. And core set consists of multiple such aggregated CCs using which PDCCH are transmitted. Uh, here I have shown aggregation level two. Aggregation level four, eight, different aggregation levels are possible, okay? Let's understand this with an example, okay? Right, example course set construction. I'm going into the details of it further, okay? Right, so this is what we understood. This is aggregation level two, right? Okay, now let's look at this further carefully. So what is, what am I showing here? This is basically one REG. Okay, one REG contains how many resource elements? 12, right? Because one REG, this is basically, I'm blowing up one REG and showing it to you. Okay, look at this, how many resource elements are there here? 12, fine, okay. Out of 12, this, there is certain REs which are reserved. Okay, I'm calling this as DMRS, DMRS, DMRS. These are basically the pilots, pilot signal which are transmitted. DMRS is demodulation reference signal. We'll discuss demodulation reference signal in great detail later. Okay, but for today, these are pilot signals which are reserved for sending pilots. And on these REs only, you can transmit data. Okay, correct? Now let's look at this. As I said, this is aggregation level two. Let's say if it is aggregation level one, how many CCs will transmit? Only one, right? And in one REGs, in one REG, how many resource element you have for transmitting data? Nine out of 12. Fine, okay, because each REG has 12 resource element. Out of 12 resource element, you are blocking three for pilots. So you're left only with nine REGs. And one CC, how many such REGs are there? Six. Nine into six becomes 154. Okay. 54 resource elements you have for transmitting data. 
right? PDCCH. Now it is QAM, 4 QAM. How many bits you can transmit? 54 into 2. This is this one. Okay? Right? So if it is basically aggregation level 1, you will allow to transmit 108 bits. If it is aggregation level 2, twice. Aggregation level 4, 4 times. Aggregation level 8, 8 times. Aggregation level 16, 16 times. Right? Okay. Now these are the bits which you can transmit. And what do these bits allow you to do? Okay. You vary the number of bits, you can vary the rate. That is the last bullet or the second last bullet which I said. Different code rate for PDCCH are realized by using different aggregation level. Right? Okay. Different every aggregation level is giving you what? Different G. Okay. Based on that, it will be different rate. And that is what you have seen for rate matching. Right? And that's, they were not magical numbers, they were coming from this design. I had to hold on till I give you this. Okay. Right? So that from there only this G's, different G's are coming then defined according to this. Right? Okay. So in each REGs, this is for record, three REs are used as pilots. Number of REs for aggregation level 2, how many? 9. 9 per REG. How many of them are there? 6 in 1 CC. Aggregation level 2, because 2 such CCs are there, you get 104. And how many bits? Total number of bits, because it is 4 qam, 108 into 2, it becomes 216. Right? Okay. Number of REs for aggregation level 1, how many will be 54? Right, so you can transmit only 108 bits. Fine, this is clear. Okay, this is along the frequency. Right, that's how we are defining. I'm going to tell you what is the its duration along time. Okay, how frequently does it come? Okay, what is the time interval? Okay, right, that's what I'm going to show you now. Okay, so is this clear? What we are saying here? Okay, right, that. This, these numbers come from different aggregation levels, right? Okay. So each P and what we are saying here is, you look at this, this is also interesting. Each PDCCH has its own pilot signal which allows different type of MIMO beam forming. Okay. So we will come to it later. Okay. What is saying here is that for different users, okay, you can use basically different kind of MIMO schemes okay, for PDCCH also, okay, and it allows. That's how it is designed. I have not taught you that, so it will be difficult to explain now. But we'll revisit it when I teach you my more, okay, right? So from here, what is clear is that these G's are coming from these nicely defined aggregation levels, okay, and nicely defined CCs, right? Okay, and see what is this? You have to keep this in mind. Why am I defining all this? Only these numbers. Okay. So, user has this knowledge pre-hand, beforehand, then this, basically these, only these number of bits can be transmitted for, for a user, okay. Right. So, if, what will happen, okay, if I put certain restrictions on the core set size and this are, these are the restrictions, okay. So, you will see that, okay, what it will do, okay, it will search over one core set, it knows that this core set can be either of this size, this size, this size. Okay. It will do this search repetitively. Okay. It will not do this search over all possible sizes. It will do this search over these possible sizes. Okay. Right? And that will restrict its number of attempt. Okay. If I define all arbitrary sizes over here, this x which is 32 right, or 36, how much is that? 36 attempts. Okay. That will become 136 or infinite number of attempts. Okay. So that is why this restriction is imposed. Let us move further. Okay. So, this MIMO and basically it can enhance PDCCH covering and BER. Okay. This will come to it later, but you should, for record why this DMRS signals are there, it can enable better coverage of the control channel. Okay. So, let us go here. Okay. So what are we saying here? That in the time domain, okay, so that Core set can span 1, 2, 3 contiguous OFDM symbols. What are we saying here? Okay, you look at this. This is one core set. This is another kind of core set. Okay. See, so you have to define these aggregation levels, right? Correct? Okay. Either you can aggregate or along time like this or aggregate along frequency. 
Okay, that's how this the standard gives you different options to aggregate. Okay, that's what I am showing you here. Okay, so figure below shows core set with one and two symbols. Okay, let's look at this. That's see this is one CC. How is it defined? It is defined only along frequency. This is another CC which is defined another along frequency. Look at this. And what are we saying? In this case, is only one symbol core set. So all the core sets are basically fitted in the first symbol. That's what it is. Look at this. No? this is, along the time, I'm not increasing, right? Okay. What is this? This is two symbol core set. Okay. And if it is two symbol core set, how will it? How will you include REGs there? REG zero. You move along time first. REG zero and REG one. Then REG two, REG three, REG four, REG five. Okay. So here. Including three REGs here and three REGs here, but you are moving in time first manner. Okay, so REGs within a core set are number in increasing order in a time first manner. If there are two symbols, first REG will come here, second REG will come here. You can have like this also. Okay, but standard says you should have like this. Okay, right? That this is a you cannot write it like this. This cannot be REG one, REG zero, one two. It cannot be like that. It has to be REG zero, REG one. That's how restriction is imposed. Okay, and what are we saying here? Different kind of core sets. Here it is along one symbol. Here it is along two symbols. Right? You look at this. The standard gives you there how many hundreds of users. Right? And if at certain time you have to send DCIs for hundreds of users, how will you accommodate such large number of users? Correct? Okay. You're not transmitting data for all of them. Just for examples. Okay. How many such REGs can be there? There can be maximum of. See, one REG consists of one PRP, so 275 PRPs, right? Okay, but one CC is six, right? So 275 by six. That's the maximum CC you can do in one symbol. But if you have to transfer from more than that, what will, where will you get it from? You'll get it from the second symbol. So that's that's how they are designed. Correct? Okay. So again, core set design, right? Okay. So starts with zero for the first OFDM symbol. And the lowest number resource block in the core set, are, that's what it's saying here, whatever I just said, starts with the lowest symbol, this is the symbol zero, and lowest number of REG. Uh, okay, then moves on like this, REG one, moves on. Fine, okay. So this is one more step, okay. And how frequently does it come? That's what I'm going to show you here, okay. Right, so I'll read it out for you, okay. What is happening here? So, core set details. What are we saying here? Okay. So, this basically OFDM symbol. You look at this. This is is coming along. So, this is okay. Let's core set duration is three OFDM symbols. Okay. I just showed you for two OFDM symbols. Similarly, they can be defined for three OFDM symbols. So, this duration, this width you see, is basically. Three OFDM symbols. Okay, like we defined for two, it is defined for three also. Okay, so this is one core set. Okay, and where are these core sets coming? One core set is coming in the beginning of the slot. That's what I am saying here. Okay, core set details. OFDM symbol zero. Okay, second core set is coming at symbol number seven. Here. Okay, so zero and seven, and when it begins at zero, it occupies three symbols, okay? And when it begins at seven, again it occupies seven symbols, right? Okay, fine. And what is this? It, and second thing is, it comes in slots zero and one. That's how it's defined, okay? So slot zero and slot one. So the same, so what is, this is three symbols and it is along frequency axis, it is defined for these, REGs and these REGs. Okay. Similarly, for this symbol, symbol seven, it is defined for these REGs and these REGs. Okay, right? Plus the same allocation is repeated for slot one also. Okay. So what are we saying here? Okay. Your PDCCH is coming only in slot zero and slot one. You see this. After that, for next three slot, there are no PDCCH. There are no DCIs coming. Why? Because the period of this core set is five slots. This whole core set allocation will repeat only after five slots. Okay, right? Do you get a feel of what is happening? Okay, 
let us look at this, there are 5 slots, okay. out of these 5 slots, these core sets or DCIs are being transmitted only in first 2 slots, rest of the slots you are not even transmitting PDCCH, okay. rest 3 slots because this, you see this allocation has not been done. Right? So, what will the user do? Just in this case, in, in this allocation, user will search here, user will search here, okay, and then it will sleep off. If it does not have, its data is not coming, so it will sleep off for 3 slots, it will save energy if its data is not there, right? If its data is there, then okay, it will know that it is coming in either in the same slot or in the subsequent 3 slots, correct? It will start decoding its data based on the information it gets from here. Right? The same core set pattern is repeated for every 5 slots, right, okay. So that is how we are defining a core set in this case, right? okay. So along what I see, what am I saying here, there is some gap in between also, so core sets can be defined like that also, okay, right. Certain REGs are coming here, certain REGs are coming here, fine, okay, right. So, but what are we saying here, in slot 0, this is the location in slot 1, same location, okay. And what is the location? You will see this, this, this is how it is defined. It starts as symbol number 0, continues up to symbol number 2, 0, 1 and 2. It starts at symbol number 7, then it continues up to 7, 8 and 9 because the duration is how much? 3 OFDM symbols, okay. And it comes in only slot 0 and 1. And what is the period? Period is this, period is 5 slots. Duration is 3 symbols, comes in slot 0 and 1, okay, and the period is 5 symbols because it, it continues, it will come only after a duration of 5, 5 slots, okay. And what are we saying here? These is basically we spoke about this bandwidth part. This is, let us say if it is 275 PRBs, you have a high end mobile, okay, so it is defined to, bandwidth part is defined to be 275 parts. 275 PRBs, okay. Accordingly, it comes only in this part of the bandwidth part, okay. If it is a low end device, bandwidth part will be only let us say 10 megahertz or fewer PRB. So, it will, so base station will have to accordingly accommodate the CCs of that user only in that bandwidth part, right, okay. And all this information user has to get somehow, right. Where are these courses defined? Then only it can search, okay. Let us say at this level we assume that the score set definition is there with, no, with the user, basically user knows it, okay, right. It exactly has all this information, right. But then also it does not know where its, where its DCIs are located, correct, okay. It has to search along all of them, we will see that, okay. You see the detailed procedure, okay, and it is just done to save the bandwidth. We will talk about that. Okay. So, what we have done in this class today is basically we have understood structure of course set to a great detail, there are certain more details which are remaining that we will continue discussing in the next class also. Okay. Thank you.